for uh, for our listeners. Oh, sure. Okay. Well, uh, number one, be organized. And, you know, uh, this is really true of anything you do in the kitchen and, for that matter, in life. But because grilling takes place outdoors, the last thing you want to do is start grilling and then realize you forgot your basting brush, realize you forgot your tongs, yeah, realize you forgot your olive oil. So uh, the French have a word for it. It's called the mise en place. It means uh, yes. basically your setup. But really think through everything you're going to need before you start grilling. Um, another, this is so basic, but you know, damn, it's, it hasn't it happened to all of us. Gauge your fuel. You know, there's nothing more uh, sickening than getting halfway through a barbecue and either running out of propane or running out of charcoal. So, enough said on that one. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, another one uh, is uh, know when to baste. We talked about that a little bit. If it's a sugar based. Uh, Baste or glaze or barbecue sauce that goes on the end. Uh, give it a rest. That's an important one when you're grilling steak. You know, uh, we have this expression "hot off the grill," but in fact, the steak will taste better if it comes off the grill, it rests for a minute or so on a wire rack over sheet pan. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, that gives gives you know it gives the juices a chance to uh, redistribute. Well, so thank you, Stephen. Uh, don't forget, folks, to head over to barbecuebible.com, register so you're up to date via the Up and Smoke newsletter. Hit the store there for all your books, tools, and accessories, or even some of that ready to eat Planet Barbecue meat. You can head on over to stephenreichland.com and check out his social media as well as stream episodes from his television shows like Project Fire. Coming up, we're going to be talking with Todd about airflow and pit management right here on Barbecue Radio Network. Build a grill, Holstein Manufacturing. You have a better recipe for when you grill. Better ingredients, better cuts of meat, and because you're using a grill from Holstein Manufacturing, well, a better grill. You take grilling seriously, and at Holstein Manufacturing, we make a serious grill. Find your new grill now at HolsteinMFG.com. We build a grill, Holstein Manufacturing. Holstein Manufacturing. We build the grill. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. Depression won't show up on an eye chart, and you won't find PTSD by looking at a thermometer. Sorting out a mental health concern takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety won't just go away under a bandage. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, call 1-800-662-HELP for free and confidential information and treatment referral. Learn more at samhsa.gov slash support. Mom, I broke my iPhone screen. Don't worry, Brandon. I can take it to Bauer Computers and have it fixed. Mom, Bob was a bad dude. What are you mumbling about? Nothing. I said they really can do anything at Bauer Computers. All right, let's go, Brandon. You're going to be late. With the tech-savvy folks at Jackson and 10th, Bauer Computers, we make it make sense. Talking with Branson from Big Creek Crossing. Spring is getting closer, and we hope you're as excited as us to get ready for warmer weather. Big Creek Crossing and Hayes has you covered for new spring clothing, shoes, entertainment, and more. Stop on by, and don't forget to come see the Easter Bunny in Center Court. Select hours can be found on our Facebook events page. We'll also be hosting a brand new event, Collecticon, showcasing sports memorabilia, history, coins, and more. This event is brought to you by Pro Image Sports and will take place on April 15th and 16th. Vendors are encouraged to register for a booth. See you there only at Big Creek Crossing. You grew up in Hayes, went to TMP, went to Fort Hayes, and met the love of your life here. To find the ring of her dreams, why not choose Hayes? At Diamond Art Jewelry, Dustin will help you turn her dream ring into a reality. Diamond Art Jewelry works with top designers to ensure the highest quality at the best prices. Diamond Art Jewelry, on the bricks in downtown Hayes. If you're a farmer or rancher, chances are you've thought about joining Kansas Farm Bureau. So what's stopping you? Your membership means you have a seat at the table when it comes to the issues that affect your farm. Things like trade, taxes, water, and regulations. 
The state's largest farm advocacy organization brings your message to policy decision makers at the county, state, and national level. The voice of agriculture becomes your voice and fights for Kansas farmers and ranchers. And a Kansas Farm Bureau membership includes other benefits. For about $50 a year, you'll receive discounts on equipment and supplies, cell phone plans, financial and legal support, home and office supplies, and more. You'll also receive Kansas Living, a quarterly lifestyle magazine featuring real stories of farmers and producers around the state, plus great recipes, crafts, and things to see and do in Kansas. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash farmer rancher to learn more. Good times, motorcycle sales and service in Hayes, Kansas. Riding down the open highway, smashing miles and smashing bugs, that's cool. But then you get home and now it's time to get those miles and bugs off that scoop. And let's face it, that ain't cool. So let Good Times Motorcycle Sales and Service give it our complete motorcycle detailing pack. A meticulous and comprehensive hand wash and remove surface contaminants, intensive compounding and polish, Silajet ceramic paint protection for durability, and hand cloth. So schedule today. Good times. Motorcycle sales and service, 1007 Vine Street and 8. Warmer weather is coming. Is your furnace filter ready? A clogged or dirty air filter restricts airflow, making your air conditioner work harder and costing you around 10% more. Top-rated filters cost around $20 and last about three months. So change your furnace filter soon. Your wallet will thank you. And your home will be cleaner and more efficient. A money-saving tip from Midwest Energy, a customer-owned cooperative, making energy work for you. Looking for a great career opportunity? Want to go back to school but you're not sure how to pay for it? The Holiday Inn Express in Hayes is hiring for multiple positions, including full or part-time housekeeping. Experience is not necessary for any position. The Holiday Inn Express offers a full benefits package, including competitive wages, bonus programs, and tuition incentives. Must be 14 years of age or older to apply. Apply today at the Holiday Inn Express, north of I-70 in Hayes. When it comes to radio, advertise with the experts. If your business serves southwest Missouri, northeast Oklahoma, or the entire state of Kansas, then My Town Media's got you covered with 17 radio stations of all different formats, including country, today's hits, top 40s, classic rock, news talk, sports talk, and more. You have an impactful message that the world needs to hear, and these formats attract listeners. Visit MyTown-Media.com and fill out the Contact Us form. On Barbecue Radio Network, this segment is brought to you by Holstein Manufacturing. Check them out at HolsteinMFG.com. They have NSF certified cookers and grills, and of course, my favorite corn roasters. And do not forget their mobile event and catering rigs as well. Check them out at HolsteinMFG.com. Stephen just left, but man, there's just so much stuff as you think about the 25 years and the Yes, the Barbecue Bible's been around that long, but over the 32 other books that he's presented us with, like, he brought to us the caveman steak. Yep, yep, um, yep. And, and just so many other things. What's your favorite? Well, he is the inventor of the beer can chicken. And yes. Who has not done a beer can chicken? And you may recall he did a whole book about beer can chicken. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so there's just so many places that get touched with things that he's introduced people to. For me, the caveman steak was the first really cool. How many times have you done this where you've fired up the coals and thrown the steak right on the coals and people lose their minds? Right, right. Yeah. But and you know it works. You, and you learned it from him. Yeah. And I remember him doing uh, this like linen, like cotton linen wrapped roast and then he just put it directly on the fire like the caveman steak, left it in the linen. It's like uh, that's just the craziest yeah, thing I've ever seen in my life. Just, you could break it off almost because yeah. it, it dried the the linen out after he soaked it. But yeah, I just I, it's amazing the amount of cool stuff that's come out of all of the things that he's gone around the globe and learned for us. Yeah, so. it's just been out of bounds, right? That's the thing that I love is just it's craziness. It's just things that you just don't even think of. Yeah. Well, so it's time now for our All Things Barbecue Product Spotlight. Their website is www.atbbq.com. 
All Things Barbecue has all the tools and accessories you need to take your barbecue to the next level. Your neighbors will be jumping over the fence to get a taste. So get fired up and get the supplies to do it all at All Things Barbecue, www.atbbq.com. And I know Todd has been chomping at the bit for this. He has a great product he wanted to oh, share. Oh, Andy, I am I'm telling you this this one's for you, buddy. This is the Napoleon 3 in 1 roasting rib rack. This is the Swiss Army knife for your grill, Andy. The reversible rack lets you roast chicken, pork, or beef, lifting the meat from the cooking grids for airflow and convection. Flip the rack over and roast a beer can chicken. Beer can chicken. Yes. It's got the hole right in the yeah, rack for it. I it's got a it. stable stand. And then the roasting rack is perfect for ribs, which you can roast up to four racks at once. Remember to slide a drip tray under the roast to catch those juices for that yummy cook for tasty gravy. $23.99, and it's dishwasher safe. Nice, nice. Very cool. Well, we'll check that out at the website, atbbq.com. And, you know... Speaking of using a rack and getting good airflow underneath the meat, and, you know, when we were talking with Stephen, that's part of the Ten Commandments of grilling is keeping that airflow right, having the zone cooking. But let's talk a little bit about that. You know, fire management and airflow in your pit, uh, what, what's the, some of the best ways to address that and handle it? Well, you, you need to understand what you're cooking on all, you know, all the time. That's usually like one of the things, you know, when people ask, uh, as you know, Andy, like, how long is this going to take? Or do I cook it fat side up or fat side down? You know, the, the first answer is a question. What are you cooking on? So with airflow, are you cooking on an offset? And I've been playing with my uh, all things or Yoder smokers, uh, Cimarron, stretch Cimarron smoker. Yeah, yeah. And that is, I've really gotten into just playing with the airflow, not only um, kind of from the inlet, but in the barrel and just creating zones. It's a lot of fun. So uh, and you have a damper on the one side that you can pull that changes the airflow in the front of the pit yep. to the back. Yeah, and so how you set up uh, can really change the airflow. Um, and, you know, usually it's the uh, – you control from the back, so you control where the fire's at. And you uh, – you know, if you need a little – need to go a little hotter, you open it up. If you need to go a little lower, you close it down, leave the stack wide open. Uh, but then there's something like a, a Kamado Joe or a big green egg. And, you know, you've, you've got to really watch the airflow in those or it'll spike on you. So usually it's just a crack on the bottom. And then I'm usually wide open on the top, and but I control on the bottom. And, you know, it'll really allow that air to come in, warm up on the coals, and then go up and convect around the dome. Um, so, you know, it really is, you, you got to know what you're cooking on. And don't be afraid to experiment, move pieces of meat around to different parts of the grate, and just get a feel for, for how it works um, with your particular setup. And when you talk about an offset... Um You've even got so many variations in an offset cooker. So you're talking about what I would call a traditional offset, yep. which is a bottom-up cook. There are reverse flow offsets. Yep. And then you've got what, I mean, it's been around for a long time, but it's relatively new in, in terms of contests and hitting the market where people can purchase them as a Texas-style offset where you're cooking top-down like yeah. a Jambo or an Outlaw or one of those kind of pits. And the big difference in those, like mine, like you said, is a, is the the heat from the bottom and rising up as it goes across this diffuser. But something like a, a hotter and faster Texas pit, it's all about the location of the firebox. The higher that firebox is in comparison to the barrel, the more direct that airflow is going to shoot across the top of the barrel versus gradually come from the bottom and find its way up. Yeah, and it's funny, the first time that, that I cooked on that style of, of cooker, um, so Rod Gray, who you know, uh, I was going to be flying out to cook with a friend of ours, Rob Marion. We, I was flying to, gosh, I think it was the Shelby contest, mm -hmm. uh, and I was going to cook on his Jambo. I had not cooked on one of those, and Rod gave me the super quick tutorial. He's like... When you, he's like, and he's the guy to teach you. Yeah, pellet envy. Yeah. He knows he knows those pits inside and out. And he said, "Here's the deal: you're going to run your fire like this." But he's like, "If you want to see how it's going to react in the pit, open the doors, 
and you can see the heat signature of that particular pit on the doors. Because, again, it comes in at the top, it rises up, and then it, it reflects, and it goes back down towards the stack. And so all of them are slightly different, but if you open the doors, there was literally a V on the doors that followed that heat signature. Crazy. And, and of course, he was cooking there that weekend, too. I think he won pork, which was amazing, because you don't do that in North Carolina. And, and, you know, they're slicing your tires on the way out of town. But it was was just neat to see how the pit cooks and get to cook on one. Yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. I'm geeking out over here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, you can see the, the the convection in the barrel. That's and, nuts. And while we all love pellet cookers, that is one thing that you lose if you've learned to cook on a pellet cooker because it does such a great job of controlling the airflow. You don't have to learn how to manage that fire. So even for people that I say, if you if you're starting with a pellet cooker, Go back to charcoal. Go back to wood at some point and learn how to properly manage. Yeah, I mean, fire. even if you've got a big green air Kamado, you can put a little draft fan on there and uh, just forced forced air, forced draft. So you know, it's 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 nice because you can control it electronically, but you know, you're you are losing that uh, learning that skill set. But any, not that uh, there's anything wrong with that. Any tips for for just your good old kettle style grill? Well, I think, you know, Steven said it best. It's uh, the three zone fire, which he's been teaching since the beginning, right? So you've got uh, a hot zone on one side of the kettle, and then in the middle, you've got a cooler zone, and then off to the other side on, a, on the opposite of the hot side is. A neutral and so what he calls the safe zone and so yeah he's been teaching that forever and i still use that right you need to have something where i'm gonna sear but i, I need to be able to control that you and, know and have a place me, on that grape what was interesting about that is i'd kind of forgotten his terminology for that and i always just use that as my indirect cooking zone so when i teach that i always talk to people about direct and indirect cooking I'm not thinking of it as like a neutral cool zone where I'm protecting the meat. I, I put the lid on and I might use it as 300 degrees. Wasn't it crazy just kind of having flashbacks of the, as he was talking and just like three zone fire, taking a, 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 a rag and putting oil on the grate. Like we learned all that stuff from him. Yeah. We want to thank Stephen Reichland for being on the show. And again, we've got a great giveaway for the 25th anniversary of the Barbecue Bible. So make sure you go follow Stephen Reichland on Facebook, follow Barbecue Radio Network, and then send in an Ask Andy question to Ask Andy at BarbecueRadioNetwork.com or just hit us in the Facebook Messenger. Check Stephen out at BarbecueBible.com or stream his TV shows at StephenReichland.com. And don't forget to head on over to All Things Barbecue at ATBBQ.com and pick up the sauce of the month. Smoke on wheels kansas city bootleg thank you all for joining us and next week we're excited to bring you aaron franklin right here on barbecue radio network